This video is the biggest art collab I have ever participated in. And I couldn't be more excited or more terrified. Let's get started. G'day everyone, I'm Jazza, and those of you who don't know, this package has traveled around the world and been in the hands and studios of some incredibly talented artists. Let's do a bit of a rewind, shall we? I had an idea. What if I started a painting? And then when I was done with my part, I chose another YouTuber to send the painting to. That YouTuber made their part. They made a video about it. And then that second YouTuber chooses a third YouTuber. And then that YouTuber makes their part. And that third YouTuber chooses a fourth YouTuber. And so on and so forth until we have a full, completed, finished, crazy collaboration painting. What's it gonna look like when it's done? There's so many unknown variables, but those unknown variables to me are what make this project so exciting. We'll see where this thing ends up. Whoa! Oh my God, it's amazing! You can see how everyone's worked in a different medium. It really does give it a lot of character. Oh, hey, look, there's another note. This one's 10 hundred. I'm hoping for a cohesive composition in the end. Oh, no pressure, I just, just don't stop it up. Can you tell I'm carrying a little bit of just a little bit of pressure with this one. It's very exciting. I am honored and privileged to be a part of this. Shake off the fear. It's time to be bold, time to be fearless. So like my collaborative compatriots, I uh, took a photo of the artwork and started sketching some ideas onto it. My instinct, honestly, is so much happening. I didn't want to pull tension too aggressively. I just wanted to play my part to sort of bring it all together with color and maybe give it a sense of place. So I wanted to treat my area like a sky and I played with a few different things, some more abstract, like some maybe different paint splat drip shapes, which is, you know, I, I always like paint splat drippy things. <laughs> but in the end, actually, the, the visual of a planet just kept coming back to my head. And when I added some of those like cosmic planet ring things to it, I just thought it looked super cool. And I thought it was an opportunity to play with a lot of color and some cool effects. So with the sketch in place that I liked, I threw in a bunch of different colors. And actually, I gotta say, I really quickly stumbled into something I was really, really happy with. Just took a little bit of that extra extra time solidifying the color schemes that were particularly focused on tying in the work that everyone else had done so far. A lot of these artists have a thing, whether it be a style or a medium, a level of expertise. I'm not sure I have a thing. If there is anything that I do that is uniquely me, it is try everything with a little bit of fearlessness. It's hard to be fearless when you're working with other people's art. So I am gonna try and be fearless because I think that's the only way I can get a cool result and truly do what I can do to bring my A game. All right, so time to get started. I set about creating a multiple medium ready workstation so I could go through as many different art mediums as my heart desired. And in getting ready, I thought I'd set up my airbrush as one of the first things to start off with, but um, let's just say I struggled with the airbrush for a good hour or so until I could get it actually working. This is so irritating. What part are we missing? Tiny Things bounce again, which is like, oh my god, fuck. These things are so bastardy. Oh. So I have a setup. A lot of the mediums that these guys have used, some of them have a bit of sheen to it, and there may not be enough for an acrylic paint to sort of grab onto. So I thought just to make sure that what I do sticks, I start off with a bit of a primer. Are these Vallejo Hobby Paint primer spray cans? We obviously have to mask all of the art that everyone else has worked on with a combination of tape and liquid mask, which I've never used before. What better time to experiment, right? <laughs> All right, so first order of business. Let's protect everything that has been done so far. Okay. Starting off by testing some of the liquid mask on the side of the painting, which I decided also to spill on the front of the painting just because I was in that sort of mood apparently. <laughs> I thought I'd come back to that when it's dry and see if it comes off cleanly. In the meantime, I taped up the whole piece so that I could use my airbrush and aerosols as freely as I wanted to. With the painting all taped up, I peeled off the dry liquid mask dabble, which actually has worked really well. I've never used this stuff before, but the theory is I could put it around the edges and get a really clean edge without needing to be accurate with the painting tape or even cut the edges of the painting tape, which, you know, would cut the painting. I tried two types of liquid mask. They both had slightly different properties. So I actually ended up using both of them, laying down one layer of the more elastic liquid mask. That was the Vallejo liquid mask. And then when that dried on top of that, I put down the green stuff liquid mask in theory to sort of bolster it up and make it a bit stronger so I could peel it all off in one piece. And with that 
starting to come together, I wanted to fleck down some stars. I did that thing where you like very barely hold down the nozzle of the spray can and it sort of goes and you get drops and that actually worked really well. So yeah. So like I said, my thing is everything. So dipped over to the laser cutter to cut a perfect circle that I could use the inner or outer cutout for to start creating my planet. I do tend to have the problem of uh, going a little further than I should sometimes and sometimes feeling like maybe I should have stopped a few steps back, but with a <laughs> fairly constant mix of experimenting between the purples, blues and black and white, I eventually had a, a gradient and shape I thought was really cool to work from as a base. I switched to the airbrush. I've never done 2D art with an airbrush ever, and this was a, uh, let's say it was a dive in the deep end. I tried to create sort of storm swirls and planetary textures that will make it look like, you know, it's this big organic mass. Obviously some of the airbrushing works really well and some is a little less delicate, but overall it was a really solid foundation because as I went back to some darker colors and opaque lighter colors, I gently sort of pushed it back into the background and softened it into the mix of the planet, overall tying it all in together and making it look pretty cool. I started to get so confident I even came back with a darker color and added in some depth. With the foundation of the planet done, I removed my inverse circle template to reveal the sky behind it where I started to then layer translucent colors to really make that highlight around the planet pop. Slowly layering in sort of semi-transparent hot pinks. And there was one moment where I made a little slip and accidentally highlighted the, the wrong area of the sky and it looked accidentally awesome. So I did it everywhere and it made these sort of sky galaxy wisps that almost look like sunstorms or something. In the end, that's gotta be one of my favorite happy accidents I've ever had. I was so happy with the result and the rewards of my being daring that I took one last daring move and added a really sharp fluorescent green as a transparent overlay over the whole planet, even over the slight edges of that white highlight around the planet. And I really am happy I did. Well, that turned out better than I expected. This is the scary bit. I'm feeling like this is a pretty satisfying process so far. Let's hope the liquid mask did what it's meant to do. Oh my God. First time using liquid mask and airbrush to paint on uh, two dimensions. It's hard to tell where it's lifting the paint, which I haven't masked, as opposed to what I want to lift. I'll have to neaten up the edges a little bit, but I don't think it'll be anything too crazy. I feel like an archeologist right now. These ancient artists used to send each other Paintings all across the world in person before everything was digitized and we all were uploaded to the matrix. Oh, oh, this is where we split. Okay, this is gonna be interesting. Oh my God. What, what, what even is this? Please, yes. Keep going, don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Don't let go. Whoa, my God, it made it. Oh, okay, let's keep going. Oh, oh, one more thing. Don't wanna forget this one. It's just a little bit I put down. There you go. Just roll it off is the answer. All right. Okay, honestly, I'm actually really happy. I, I really like the way it fits into the whole piece and also uses different colors to bring it all together. Fills that space and actually is gonna act as my foundation to put a few things on. I really don't want it to lift up or peel and it's gonna be vulnerable to that, uh, especially because it was painted onto that sort of sheeny surface, even though I used a primer. So I'm gonna use this matte finishing sealer. I really hope this doesn't ruin the artwork, but I'm gonna mainly spray it over my bit, but also it's just, it has to bleed over the edges a little bit. I have no idea if this is gonna affect the, the finish of the edges of these, but I do have to seal my artwork to the edges of their pieces. So there's nothing to it, but to do it. All right, so even though it's a matte product, it still actually added a little bit of a sheen that ties it all in together a little bit. Now I'm gonna add stuff next. Let's do 
this. I have this set of Scale Color Artist miniature paints. They are a heavy body acrylic that I've been really keen to try. I know they're really made for miniature painting, but hey, acrylic paint is acrylic paint, right? And it's heavy body, so it's gonna be more pigmented than average. And it seems fancy, and it's got a cool box, and I wanted to try it, so sue me. It comes with a little wet palette, so I set that up, put in a bunch of colors that I thought would work, especially based on the sketch that I had, and just got stuck straight into it. Starting off without wetting down or diluting the paints too much, and slowly laying in the rings of this planet. The approach I had for this was a bit of a foundation of white, and then when that was dry on top of that, dabbing the brush in a few different colors all at once and just streaking it through, hoping it would carry through some of those colors and streaks. It did a pretty good job, and with various layers of mixing in some colors and lines and then using a dry brush to sort of pull those through and soften it, eventually I got an aesthetic that I thought works really well. And I used the, the really weird long line brush thing that I see sign writers use that I've also never used before that I wanted to give a go. I mean, what better time to try new things than the most high pressure artwork you've ever contributed to, right? I added some slightly darker, subtle streaks around the edges of the planet to make the rings look a little more translucent. And then I set about putting the debris, the comets and broken rubble that are floating around this whole planet in orbit. These are asteroids, man. They're broken. They go where they go and I have to paint it that way. So I really just decided to plop it down. The only one I removed was one that made it look like the crow was you know, eating the pebble, the asteroid things. But other than that, I was pretty happy with a reasonably organic distribution of these things. And then I went through, mixed in a little bit of shadow and slowly built up a little bit more of that body. Last but not least, I have my ship. Now, originally in my sketch, I had the one ship and I'm not all into ship design, so it's not gonna look like some cool, super fancy spaceship. I thought I'd just lean in more whimsical. I mean, the tone of this piece is really quite playful anyway. And it seemed a little weird to just have one solo ship. So I threw in a couple of buddies in there and with base mid tone down, I went through and working between highlights and shadows, slowly built up these ships. Finally, it came to details. Now, everyone else I had noticed through the piece had left their mark and and as you might have seen in my sketch, I decided where I would leave mine, the name on the side of the ship. I kept it pretty subtle, but I couldn't help myself. I had this little glass window and I had to uh, had to put myself in the cockpit. I like to imagine I'm part of this fun little universe. And then I went throughout the piece, adding some sharp highlights and a little bit of accents all around the ships and then the asteroids. All right, so let's take it back to the top. I had the honor of being a part of and wrapping this artwork up before sending it back to 1000. And when he sent it, he attached this note at the back. I'm gonna read through that. Up. He says, hello, you talented creator. Thanks so much for taking part in this YouTuber collab painting. I'm so excited to see where this thing will go and who will be adding to this artwork. Whatever you wanna do creatively on this piece, is 100% up to you. Please film your process of creating your art and post it on YouTube so fans following the progress of this piece can follow along. In short, 1000 wanted to make a collaboration that saw a painting travel the world and experience everyone's 100% creative instincts. I can say as the final contributor to this artwork that not only has it well and truly traveled the world, but the contributions of the people who have collaborated on this piece so far have just been so inspiring to watch. I've been following following this from the beginning. And to have been picked at the end to contribute myself has just been a huge honor. And I'm proud to say that I certainly gave this 100% of my creativity. It's done. Wait, no, it's not done. There is one last thing. I don't want to be the obnoxious guy, but there's no room up there. Shouldn't have slapped that. Oh well.
It's obnoxious, but at least it's consistent. What a ride that this painting has been on, that I've been on with you here today, and that I've been on watching all these talented creators. Now, please go check out their videos. I'll make sure to pin a comment in the comments so you can go check out the whole playlist from start to finish, and later will be added to that 10 hundreds reaction or review or whatever he does with this, which I believe is gonna be a charity auction, a print sale. Very exciting and such a cool idea. 10 hundred, thank you so much for having me and doing this. What a fantastic and inclusive and cool and fun and exciting idea. They're all my favorite things. And my other favorite thing is making content for you. So if you wanna see more fun with art and creativity, please subscribe here, cause I always, always, try new things. And hey, we have a new place to try it all out in. So yeah, it's only gonna get crazier. That's it for now. Thank you so much for watching 10 Hundred. This is coming your way very soon, but until next time, I'll see you later.